So you've got some really cool data you want to show everyone. It's time to make a visualization to show off all the cool insights. But what's the best option to display the data? You've seen tons of bar charts and pie charts, but what about the cool colored maps and stacked ribbon charts? We need our reports to look fancy, right? Let's take a look at our visualization options and when we might want to use each one. The first category is time series visualizations. These are used anytime data is being plotted to show a change over time. The most basic of these is the line graph, where values such as expenses is plotted over a period of time. These can be stacked into a multiple line chart if there is a common measure, such as plotting expenses and income together. A stacked area chart can be used when each of the lines sum up to a total. For instance, each area represents a department's expenses, all the departments sum together to show the total organization's expenses. Finally, we have a combination bar and line chart. This is when we want to show two very different measures to see if there's any impact. So we might plot our expenses per month on a line chart against a bar chart of average temperature per month, displaying our insights that our expenses increased during high temperatures due to air conditioning costs. People love to categorize things, so it's no surprise that category comparison visualizations are very appealing to our brains. We have quite a few options for categorizing data. The most basic is diagramming. Think process flowcharts or ER diagrams or these videos. Though they may not involve numeric values we usually think of, don't discount diagramming as a great way to show the more abstract parts of our data stories. Tables are of course the most common and most overused method to compare anything. Make sure if you're using a table, it's either for somebody who wants to spend a lot of time digging into the raw data, or it's a very clear and concise table. Bar charts are another favorite, and for good reason. Our brains are very good at quickly comparing shapes. They are not as good at comparing proportions, so choose bar charts instead of pie charts almost every time. Also, make sure to limit the amount of bars to the most important categories. Don't overwhelm the user with them. Stacking bar charts is good if you want to show parts that sum up to a whole. If you really want to highlight proportional difference, go with a tree map. These can also handle more categories than bar charts without getting overwhelming. They usually work better when you want to highlight the largest proportions. Color contrast can also help highlight critical information. The last two options should be used with caution. Spatial maps should only be used when geography is the most critical factor. If you want to show revenue by region, a bar chart will probably be clearer. If you want to map mechanical part failures by location to identify if malfunctions cluster in cold temperature regions, a map would be perfect. The last is the small multiple chart. This is for when you have too much data to display in a single chart without getting overwhelming. Remember that bar graph with too many bars? If it's critical to show all of this data, then a small multiple chart could work. Our next type of visualizations involve quantitative data. Scatter plots are great for showing a large number of data points and quickly spotting outliers and correlation trends. Box plots can be easier to read when scatter plots get too messy. They clearly show distributions and deviations. And our final type of visualization is the simple single measure. If our important KPI is total percentage of product defects, there's no reason to go fancy. Just a scorecard with the value, maybe with an indicator of it trending up or down, will be the most clear presentation. Adding in a spark line, bullet graph, or both could give a little more detail about the trending of the critical value, but be careful not to overdo it and obscure the important information. It may be better to highlight in a simple scorecard and then have an easy drill down into the details when needed. With all the options, it's important to spend the time to find the right visualization for each data story we're trying to convey. Otherwise, we could end up with a mess that confuses users and they just stop paying attention to the data. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.